So let's go back through and let's just do a little remembering because I have oh, tons of videos on complex numbers, right? Um, so let's go back through and, and remember what does square root mean, right? What does the square root mean? Square root means the reciprocal of squaring. If you guys remember, if I said square number, that means multiply by itself two times because you're squaring it. So the square root would be what number multiplied by itself gives you an answer. So we look at, let's do our first answer, square root of 4. If you guys remember, well, it was plus or minus 4, or plus or minus 2, right? So the square root of 4, we could say, is plus or minus 2. Then let's look at the square root of 5. Can I multiply a number? Do I have a whole number that I can multiply by itself to give us 5? No. So usually in mathematics, unless we ask you to approximate, we leave it as the square root of 5, right? We don't want to give you the decimal because this is what we call an irrational number. It's going to, the decimal is going to go on and on forever. So whenever you write, stop writing the decimal, you're approximating its value. We don't want to approximate the value. We want the exact value. So we leave it as the square root of 5. Now the next thing is we're just going to talk about the square root of negative 1. Now automatically, for all negative numbers, you cannot take the square root of a negative number. Because think about it. A positive times a positive gives you a positive. A negative times a negative gives you a positive. Well, if you do a positive times a negative, you get a negative. But then they're not the same number. So do you see how it's impossible to take the square root of a negative number? It's impossible. However, we want to be able to do mathematics with all types of numbers. So we do mathematics with real numbers, right? You've added and subtracted real numbers. You've done all that stuff, correct? Now what we're going to do is we're going to work in a new number system, which is the imaginary number system, where we can do similar mathematics. All right? Just because we can't take a square root of it in the real number system does not mean we need to stop doing mathematics. Well, so what we're going to do to continue to do mathematics with numbers that are not in the real number system, we're going to create the imaginary number system. So we say the square root of negative 1 is equivalent to i. All right, and actually, so we say the square root of negative 1 is equivalent to i. Now, why would that come in, why would that come, why would that be important? Well, because now, if I look at what is the square root of negative 16, we automatically know we can't take the square root of negative 16, right? Because it's a negative number. However, by introducing the imaginary system, or the imaginary number system, we can now rewrite that as 16 times negative 1. Right? Is there anything wrong with writing negative 16 as 16 times negative 1? And then I could break that up into 16 times the square root of negative 1. And now, could I take the square root of 16 and the square root of negative 1? Yes. 4 and i. All right, and we're just going to leave, since I already introduced, since I already gave you the square roots, I'm really just going to talk about the positives. I introduced the positive and the negative here because I wanted you guys to understand when, it, when you um, can't take, why you can't take a negative. But really, when I already have the square root, I'm just going to want to talk about the positive version of it. So you guys can see how now I can get a number out of this. Before, you just have to say what? Can't do it, right? You just say, hey, you can't, you can't take the square root of it. But now, we can take the square root with using the imaginary number system. All right? And then for this problem, what can we do here? Can we, can we take square root? No, we still can't take the square root. But we can now rewrite it as a square root of 5i. All right? So that's some of the reasons why we use the imaginary number system, because it allows us to do mathematics for numbers that we don't have in our real number system.